I am so excited to try out this brand that I've wanted to try out for so long, Bao Hong Academy Watercolor Paper Block. On the cold pressed, I'm going to be doing a little bit of like a surreal landscape, and then on the hot pressed, we're going to be doing a little portrait here. I really hope this paper is good. I chose to do a portrait on the hot pressed paper and a landscape on the cold pressed. I think this is pretty common practice, though on my arches paper I only have cold pressed and I think it does make painting a portrait a little bit harder. Hot pressed paper works really well for portraits because it's smooth and you can get some really lovely blends. It doesn't make the process harder. Whereas I often find that when I paint portraits on cold pressed paper, especially those with a lot of texture like the arches, sometimes you can accidentally get dry brushing effects with harsh lines and that doesn't look very good for a face. Whereas for a landscape, the dry brushing works and added texture can bring dimension to a painting. So that's why I chose each subject for each paper type. When it comes to using the paper and how it reacted, honestly, I have mixed feelings. For the first couple of layers, I started with the wet on dry technique. I don't always do this, but often it gives me more control in the location in which I add each colour. And for most 100% cotton papers, this is absolutely fine. I've created tons of pieces on cardi paper by adding the paint and then using water to blend it out. I recently painted a drawless in your style using just this technique and I love how it turned out. I leave the video down below for that one, we're talking all about the pros and cons of art challenges and it's one of my best paintings yet. Plus, I had intended for one block to be just wet on wet and the other to be just wet on dry. But for this paper, that did not work. The paper dried very quickly. Every time I added the paint, even trying to make something as simple as a flat wash, the paper dried so quickly that it created blooms. It could not be blended out. There are lots of ways in which blooms can look really beautiful on a piece, especially on something like flowers. Blooms look so pretty on flowers. But I'm not quite sure the center of her face was the right place for those blooms. It looks patchy. It was a really bad base layer and it was really hard to fix. You can see I spent multiple layers just trying to fix this mistake. The paint immediately dried and each layer following kind of lifted up the previous layer, which obviously wasn't what I was aiming for. Honestly, it felt like I was using cellulose paper and not 100% cotton. For this portrait, I then decided to use the wet on wet technique. A few layers too late at this point, but we had to try and fix it. I don't do this several layers in, but we didn't really have a choice. It did lift some of the previous paint, but it also worked really well. I had no issues with dropping the paint and I was able to achieve some lovely soft blends. The paper stayed wet, it didn't seem to dry quickly. Although I did put a lot of water on the page in anticipation of it drying, so that could just be it. But still, that's one of the best traits when it comes to 100% cotton paper over cellulose, it's the drying time. Obviously the paper is quite small, it's about the size of a postcard. So this might not be the case when working on a larger scale. I only picked up these small blocks because they were perfect size for what I was after. But at a larger scale, any potential negatives with the paper will be more noticeable. That's what I noticed with Archer's paper anyway. It's harder to use wet on wet at a larger scale, so that's when you might notice more negatives. Taking what I'd learned from that slightly horrific portrait painting experience, I approached this surreal landscape slightly differently. I wet the page first, since the paper seemed to work a lot better with the wet on wet technique, added some paint and really just let the paint do what it wanted on the paper. I did want to try using salt and spraying water. Typically when I use new paper, I like to test it as much as I can to really get a good grasp on how it works. Plus, since blooms were created so easily, I was curious to see what would happen if you actually tried to make them intentionally. The salt worked well and it created some lovely blooms, so I think this paper does have its place. If I was going to recommend this paper, I would say it's best used in specific ways, mostly wet on wet 
wet and only a few layers max. If you're using watercolour, keep it loose, add blooms, add splatters, use mixed media. I have used this paper with jelly gouache. I painted a Pokemon from my partner in Art Vlog 9, which I will leave below, and it was good. I think this paper is best suited for mixed media, especially the hot pressed one. It doesn't work like watercolour paper, it feels like mixed media cellulose paper, the hot pressed one. So I would recommend getting cold pressed if you're using watercolour and hot pressed if you're using gouache, pastels or water activated mediums like pencils or crayons. If you're used to cheap paper, this is a really good option. I also love that they're on blocks. The blocks are quite stiff and the paper can be a little bit tricky to separate, but I still think it's completely worth it. You don't need to worry about tape and stretching the paper and then the tape possibly ripping and ruining your entire piece. Peace. I personally love paper blocks because they're so easy. I got these papers from Stationery Pal and I also bought another cold pressed one from Timu which you might have seen in the huge haul I did. Well they're both from hauls so I'll leave them below. When these papers are on offer you can get the blocks for less than £3 each so keep an eye out for the offers. I have codes for both shops below if you're interested in getting these paper blocks. I have done a few other first impression type videos, so if you've enjoyed this one I will leave a few of those below which you might be interested in. I hope this might have been helpful for you if you've seen the papers around and are a little bit curious or you have some and have been struggling to use them like I did at the beginning. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm here every Thursday and Sunday and I hope to see you then. Look after yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!